Welcome to the Mega Mitten Meetup, uh, where we're going to explore uh, making mittens for the Mustard Seed, a local charity in our Edmonton area. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the steps for making mittens um, using a pattern from another Canadian company called Tin Can Knits. So I'm using this free pattern. It's called the World's Simplest Mittens. And I'm going to uh, take you with me on a journey through this particular pattern, uh, showing you the steps for making your own mittens, including weaving in the ends and fixing the hole in the back. All right, let's get started. All right, let's make some mittens. I have the essential ingredients for making mittens. I have some yarn. This is Drops Merino Extra Fine, which is 100% merino and it's machine washable. So this is gonna make a nice, super soft and warm pair of mittens. I have some double pointed needles. I have a small, a smaller set and a larger set here because we're going to use the smaller set to cast on and then once you get to past the cuff we'll switch to the larger needles. And I have a pattern. The pattern is the World's Simplest Mittens by Tin Can Knits and I'm going to be working on the DK gauge size of the pattern. Um, and that's about all you need. I do also have um, a sock ruler, a couple of sock rulers actually over here, and I'm going to use these to measure with uh, rather than a tape measure. So I'll show you how I do that. I just uh, really like these sock rulers for measuring mittens and socks, and I'll explain that as we go along. So let's begin with a cast on. You can do a long tail cast on, you can do a knitted cast on, that's totally up to you. I'm going to do a knitted cast on because I'm not so good at estimating the amount of yarn that you need for a long tail cast on. Um, there are some tricks that you can do with that, but I prefer just to do a knitted cast on. <clears throat> Alright, to do a knitted cast on, you're going to start with a slip knot and you place that slip knot on one of your needles and you pick up the other needle and to do a knitted cast on you start by knitting. So you're going to insert your right hand needle into that slip knot stitch, wrap your yarn around, bring that loop through the base of that stitch and then we're going to put it back on the left hand needle. You can introduce a nice little twist here if you take your left hand needle, put it underneath the loop that's on your right hand needle and bring it through like this and just give it a little tug. To do a cable cast on, which is one that I like, you insert your needle now between the two stitches that you have on your left hand needle, wrap the yarn around, bring the yarn in between those two stitches, and then again take your left hand needle, insert it under the front of, this, of the loop that's on your right hand needle, and snug it up a little bit. The last stitch that you make always wants to cross over the top of the previous stitch, so don't let that bother you. Just use your right hand needle to kind of pull them apart. Put your needle in between those two stitches, wrap your yarn around, bring it forward, and then again your left hand needle goes under the front of the loop and you snug it up. Now here's a little trick that I have. Uh, for doing this uh, and that is once I put the loop on my left hand needle I right away insert my right hand needle in between those two stitches while it's loose and then I can give it a good snug and it just speeds up the whole process. Okay so you're going to cast on all the stitches that you need for your mitten cuff uh, depending on which pattern you're using. Cast them all onto one double pointed needle and then we'll go ahead and split them up onto various needles. Okay, so I've cast on all my stitches. I'm going to do a little double count here, so just take a moment to count your stitches. Okay, 
So I've got the right number of stitches for uh, my mitten cuff and now I'm going to split them up onto two other double pointed needles so that I will have three DPNs holding my stitches all together. Um, when I do this I try to split them up in multiples of two or multiples of four. It depends on what kind of ribbing you're going to do on your mitten. Uh, this pattern calls for a one by one ribbing so multiples of two will work really well and more or less evenly. Uh, it doesn't have to be an even number. Um, it's just uh, it doesn't have to, you don't have to split them up equally between three needles uh, at this point. We're just going to be knitting in the round. So I'm going to put uh, about 12 stitches on this first needle and I'm just transferring them over tip to tip. I'm putting my right hand needle in as if to purl or you can just think of it as point to point and sliding the stitch over without knitting it. I've got 14 on there so I'm going to put two more back. Okay so I've got 12 stitches on this needle and now I'm just going to let it dangle and pick up a second double pointed needle and here I'm going to again put another 12 stitches onto my right hand needle. And from my count that'll leave 10 stitches on this needle, so more or less even. Okay, when you, um, the, the next the next challenge here is to get joined up in the round without twisting your stitches. Um, and a lot of people are kind of nervous at this point because as you can see here the cast on edge likes to kind of curve around and you may find that it's even kind of more twisted and it can happen on you know on on both sides. So if you want to um, lay your needles down for a second you'll see that what you want to do when you join is to make sure that your cast on edge is all facing into the inside of the little triangle that you're going to make with your needles. But I actually don't worry about that too much. Um, I'm just going to show you here that one end of my, my cast on edge is connected to the ball. That's this end. And the other end of my uh, yarn, this, this end over here, that's the first stitch I cast on. Right? And this is the last stitch I cast on because it's connected to the ball. So I'm going to find the first stitch that I cast on and I'm going to put that needle with that stitch in my left hand and I'm going to put that stitch right close to the edge of the needle where the taper starts. I'm going to pick up a fourth needle here and notice I'm not even worried at all about those other stitches. They're just kind of hanging out down here. I insert my uh, empty needle into that first stitch and then I go and I find the yarn that I cast on with and I just try and bring it around here without worrying too much about it. Things are just getting, I fold those needles up so that it comes around and I'm going to uh, get that ready to make my first stitch. And so now that I'm doing this I can kind of see that there looks like there's a bit of a twist in my stitches here. So I'm going to sort that out a little bit. If I take this needle around like that and then I bring this yarn up again here and I insert it into that empty needle. Now, yeah, you can sort of see here now things are looking a lot better. Okay, you see that? So I'm going to go ahead and knit this first stitch here. It's super awkward but it's, it'll get better, I promise. And then, uh, so the instructions are to knit one and then purl one. So I'm going to bring my yarn to the front and I'm going to purl the next stitch. And you know what? I'm not actually going to worry. Knit and then purl. I'm not going to worry too much about whether or not there's twist in this cast on edge because I can fix that at the end of this first round. So I'm just going to get straightened out here and work my first round of knit one, purl one. When you get to the end of your first double pointed needle you will have freed up a double pointed needle. So you put that in your right hand, take your yarn to the back, turn your needles just slightly towards the right and continue knitting. So I've knit and purled all the stitches on here and now I'm going to continue to knit Bring the yarn forward, purl, knit, and purl. 
And what I want you to notice here is that I am not paying any attention to the other two needles involved in this process. I'm only focused on the needle that is doing the knitting and the needle that I am knitting from and the other two are just more or less dangling. When you get to the end of any one needle you will have freed up a needle. You put that in your right hand, turn everything around just, just slightly to the right and you continue knitting. Okay, and if your needle looks like it might be in danger of losing stitches, just move it so that your stitches are balanced in the middle. And this is why I like an even number of stitches, because I know that I'm always going to begin each, uh, each needle with a knit stitch, and I'm going to finish each needle with a purl stitch. So if I end up with the wrong stitch, I know that I've made a mistake somewhere along that needle. Here we go, knit, purl, and these last two stitches again, they, they like to get kind of crammed together, so I'm just going to pull them apart, knit, and purl. So I've completed one round here, and if I got to the end of the round and I found that my stitches were twisted, you might find that that looks something like this. Do you see how the stitches are curved around my needle here? Okay, so I can't continue knitting like this because uh, eventually that twist will create a big fold in my knitting. So in order to deal with this, what I have to do is undo that twist. So you're going to just um, take your, I'll put this down, take your stitches and make sure they're all going the right way around the needle and if you do find a twist, take your needle that's got the twist on it and just swirl it around like that until the twist comes out and that twist will go into this little joining yarn in between your first and third needle. So you want your stitches, you, you want your cuff to be building around your double pointed needles in kind of like the center. Okay, you've uh, finished your first round, um, you've, your stitches are not twisted, and now it's time to do the second round. So I just want to show you that when you're knitting on double pointed needles, and when you're knitting things in the round, you want your knitting to be facing outwards. So you want to be um, focused on your knitting uh, so that you're looking at the outside of the stitch as you go, and not the inside of the stitch. So this is a place where um, people can get turned around a little bit. So when you're knitting, uh, try to make sure that your mitten cuff is sort of pointing towards you as you work. Let's go ahead and do the second round here. Okay, so you see that it's kind of hard to see right now because I don't have very much of a cuff going here yet. But the um, I want it to be I want to be looking at the outside of my mitten cuff as I work around. So uh, in making your mitten cuff, you're just going to continue working around and around in knit one, purl one, ribbing. until you have the length uh, required for your mitten cuff. I'll just show you one thing that can happen as you're working around. Okay, so here I finished off my uh, row here with a purl stitch and I'm about to go to the next needle and if I forget to take my yarn to the back for the next stitch because it's a knit, if, if I leave it up here in the front and I go to knit my next stitch, guess what happens? I end up with an extra stitch at the end here. Okay, I'm going to leave that one in there and I'm going to show you what to do about it when you come back to it. This is a very common mistake that can happen 
uh, in knitting with double pointed needles and even circular needles is that if you uh, forget to put your yarn in the right position for the next stitch, you can end up with another loop. Now that loop is not a real stitch, so when you get to it, you can just drop it off the end of the needle. But let's have a quick peek to see what it looks like. And so you know that you're not dropping a live stitch off the needle, that you're actually dropping uh, what we call a yarn over off the end of your stitch. So I'm just coming up on it here. Okay, so there's my last purl stitch. And then I've got this extra stitch on here. But can you see, let me push this one out of the way. Can you see how this extra stitch doesn't have a bottom on it? It's just got like a little hole uh, underneath it. And so if I take my needle out, nothing bad happens. I'm gonna have a little bit of a loose stitch there, but that slack will get taken up. So at the end of each of your double pointed needles, try to remember to take the yarn, if you finish with a purl stitch, take the yarn to the back before you begin your next needle. And that will help to make sure that, you're, um, that you don't end up with an extra stitch at the edge. The other kind of common thing that can happen with double pointed needles is that your double pointed needle can kind of poke into the fabric and pull up an extra stitch that way as well. So for example, uh, when I'm, you know, if I'm adjusting my needles here, sometimes I can actually go through an extra stitch here and pick up, you know, part of another stitch. So if you end up with uh, an extra stitch in your uh, rib pattern somewhere, take a look at it, make sure it doesn't have a bottom on it. By bottom, you can see that this stitch here, it has something attached to it on the bottom. It's not just a yarn over the needle. It's actually got a base and this one does too. So those are real stitches and yarn overs are not. You can just bump them off the end of your needle. Okay, keep knitting until your cuff is the same length as the cuff required in your pattern. I'll meet you back here for that. Okay, so in my mitten cuff pattern, I need to go for two and a half inches. And I'm going to take my little uh, sock, um, my sock ruler and insert it into my mitten top here and just adjust it so that the edge is just peeking out there. And I'm at two and a half inches. So that's great. So that's the reason why I like this little sock ruler. You can insert it into your mitten cuff or your sock cuff and you can get a, you know, get a pretty accurate measurement, but it um, pushes the stitches out to the side like this. So I just find it's a really handy way of measuring. Um, so I love it. These are the sock ruler juniors. I use these for the small people in my life and there's an adult size as well. Okay, so uh, that means I'm on my last round here. I'm just finishing my last needle, and then we'll go on to the next part of the uh, mitten, which is to create the hand portion and the thumb gusset. And of course, we'll switch to larger needles. Okay, so I'm at the end of my at the end of my round, and I know that because there's the tail that I started with, and it lines up quite evenly with the um, intersection of these two needles. So that's the end of my round. You can also put a locking stitch marker on here if you'd like to to help you remember that. Um, but that's what I use as my memory cue on that one. So the next, um, let's see here, the next part of the uh, instructions are to uh, knit a few rounds uh, using the larger needles. So I'm going to switch those out now. Take out my larger needles. Put my smaller needles to the side so they don't get mixed up. And uh, this time we're just going to knit around. Nothing fancy happening here. Uh, just knit your stitches from the smaller needles onto the larger needles. 
And just remember that each time you free up a needle, instead of pulling it around to put it in your right hand, put it down somewhere. So in my instructions it says to knit, I'm going to knit three rounds before beginning the thumb gusset. So um, in the lead up to this one it would be helpful if you have one stitch marker. So if you don't have a stitch marker with you right now, take a break and go and grab one. And then we're going to do some make one increases and insert a stitch marker. So I'll meet you back here. Oh, look at that. See, I got talking and I've got to put that one down. Pick up the larger one. Okay, so I'll meet you back here when you are ready to start your thumb gusset. All right, I've done my three rounds and um, just wanted to, whoops, 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 whoops. All right, I've done my three rounds and I just wanted to show you here um, one way of checking the number of rounds that you've done. So you can see in my ribbing here that I've got this line of pearl rows like this. Uh, it's knit one, pearl one, knit one. And so I can see kind of like the last little pearl bump that's here. And on top of that pearl bump, I can see one, two, three stitches. So these are the three rows that I completed on top of my ribbing. And now I'm back to the beginning of my round. I have put a locking stitch marker right up here in the fabric underneath my first needle. That's just to give me a bit more of a visual reminder when I'm back at needle number one. I've got my first needle, my second needle, and my third needle here, and I'm knitting around and around. Notice also that I'm looking at the outside of my work as I'm working around and not at the inside of my work. Uh, so this is my this is my mitten and I'm about to start the thumb gusset. Um, and so um, in the pattern that we're working from there's a setup round and that setup round says make one, knit one, make one, and then place a marker. So I have an extra marker here to place in my work. Um, when you look at the make one instructions, it just says to increase using your favorite method. So I'm just going to show you my favorite method. It, it doesn't mean you have to do it that way. You, you can pick your own favorite method. Uh, but one thing I would advise you against is a knit front and back. Um, that's going to put your count off a little bit for reasons I won't get into right now. Uh, but whatever um, kind of increase you do, you should do some sort of raised increase. Um, I'm going to do that one here. You see this little bar that's sitting between the knit stitch on this needle and the knit stitch on this needle. There's a little bar right there. So I'm just going to pull it up and put it onto my needle and now I'm onto my left hand needle and now I'm going to knit it so that it twists at the bottom. So if I pick it up and I put it on my needle like this and I go into the front of that stitch, it's going to make a large hole here. And so I don't want to do that. I want to go into whichever leg is going to give it a bit of twist. So in this case, I'm going to go into the back leg. So I'm just going to you can sort of like spin it over like this and just insert it like that and knit that raised bar and that creates a stitch. So I've made one stitch where there wasn't one to begin with. And then I knit the next stitch and I'm going to make one again. So I'm just going to raise that bar stick it on here and because my needle is already in the back when I when I put it on I just put the left hand needle tip into the front of that stitch I can go ahead and knit it like that and then I place my marker on my needle and this is going to mark the thumb stitches as you go along and then the instructions just say to knit to the end of the row and then you're going to do rounds one and two which is just to knit as well. So recap, you're going to make one, knit one, make one, place your marker into your knitting, knit to the end of the row, and then knit two more rounds plain. Alright, so here I am. I have completed uh, rounds one and two of the thumb gusset and now it is round three. And again, we're just going to be doing these increases on either side of the thumb gusset. So you begin needle number one 
with an increase and I'm going to do the same increase as before. I'm just going to raise the bar, put my left needle into the front of it and knit it, which twists the stitch at the same time. And then you knit right up to the marker and do another make one increase. So I'm lifting it with my right needle from the back to the front, inserting my left needle into the front of that raised bar, uh, yarning over to turn it into a knit stitch with a little twist at the bottom. Slip your marker over and knit to the end of the round, which means that I'm going to knit this needle, then this needle, and then this needle, and be back to my needle number one or the beginning of the round. And that completes row three. Then the instructions, no matter what size or what, um, no matter what size or what um, kind of yarn you're using, you're going to repeat rounds one and three a different number of times uh, in order to get the number of stitches required for the thumb gusset. And so as I come around here on round number three, Uh, I'm just going to show you where you're going to count your stitches so you know when you're done. Alright, so that's the completion of round three, and now I'm going to repeat round one, which is just to knit all the stitches, round two, which is to knit the stitches, and then I'll do another round three where I increase, knit to the marker, increase, and carry on. And you're going to continue doing those increases every third round until you have a total number of stitches between the beginning of the round and the marker that is indicated in your pattern. And so you can just count those stitches on the first needle. I've got uh, five so far. Um, so again, uh, repeat rounds one to three. Uh, the total number of times uh, to get the number of stitches between the beginning of the needle and your marker that you need for your thumb. All right, I'll meet you back at the next part. All right, occasionally when you are knitting, you're going to come across a knot in your yarn. Uh, so this one was in my yarn, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to just kind of stop and show you what I do to deal with a knot in my yarn. Um, you don't want that knot in your mitten uh, for two reasons. One, it could come apart, and two, um, it will, you'll feel it in there. So the best thing to do with a knot is to get rid of it. Uh, so I'm just gonna back up a little bit here just to give myself a little more space. Now I'm, I'm kind of kind of in the middle of my mitten. So um, in this case, you know, I'm not at the beginning of the thumb or anything like that. It's, it's kind of in the middle. So I'm just gonna let it, just gonna let it hang there. So I'm going to cut the knot out of my yarn. Okay, and now I've got this little, um, this little tail here. Just gonna, I'm just gonna tuck that to the outside for now. And this new yarn I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put it on the outside uh, just because it just kind of gets anchored between my needles like that. And I'm gonna keep knitting. Uh, so I didn't do anything, um, I didn't do anything special here. I just took the tails and put them to the outside and I kept on knitting. When I get around to this spot again, I'm going to have two loose stitches. One will be the stitch that's attached to the yarn, to, to one yarn tail, and the other loose stitch will be the next stitch beside it. And so I'll show you um, how I deal with that when we get to that point in just a minute. Now, while I was cutting that knot, um, I forgot how many rows I had done since my last increase. So I thought it might be a good opportunity to show you here. I know my yarn's really dark, but I'm just going to explain that um, if I pull, kind of pull up with my needle, there's, there's the stitch that I did my, here's my increase stitch right here. It's the one with the little twisted bottom on it. And I've got one uh, stitch coming out of that. So I've done one row on top of my increase. And so this will be the second row. 
And so when I come around here next time, just making a mental note to myself, when I come around here next time I'm going to do my increase round or my round three. Alright, so let's knit up to that point where I cut my yarn. Okay, so here we are. Those are the two, those are the two tails. So I'm going to knit one, two, and this, this stitch when I knit it, it's going to be a little bit loose because it's attached to one of those tails. So I'm just going to stick them on the inside now. And I just know this stitch is going to be a little bit loose as well because it's attached to a tail. I'm going to knit to the end of the row here without doing anything in particular about those two tails. And when I get to the end of this needle, you can see that there are like two kind of tight stitches. But when I tug on these tails, those uh, that that loose stitch disappears. Okay, so I'm just going to leave them dangling here on the inside, and then later on when I'm done, I'm going to weave in those ends, and I'll cross them across each other like this, just to make sure that there's no hole on the inside. But for now, I'm just going to tuck them away right there and carry on. So if you wanted to uh, put a stripe in your mitten, that's exactly how I would do it. I'd just cut the old yarn and start the new yarn and away I go. If you are going to put a stripe in, it, it's generally easier if you do it after you've um, increased for the thumb, but you can put a stripe all the way through the thumb as well. So if you were going to introduce a stripe, I'd probably do it right here at the beginning of the round. Um, right next to your thumb. Okay, uh, so carry on and uh, keep going. All right, so I have uh, finished my last round three. Um, I have the required number of stitches uh, in my thumb gusset and you can see the thumb gusset building up here with these little uh, with the increases that you've been making so that's pretty cool. So now uh, I'm at the beginning of the round uh, that starts next round and it says uh, place stitches between the beginning of the round marker and the marker on waist yarn. So I have a little bit of waist yarn here and I'm going to and I've got it uh, attached to a uh, wool needle and I'm going to um, slip these stitches onto my waist yarn. So this is pretty simple. I just get up to that point here and just like when you were transferring stitches you're just going to insert the wool needle as if to purl or tip to tip and you can slide those stitches over onto the wool needle. There we go. And if you like, if you know, if they start to come off the edge, that's okay because they're just going to go onto your waist yarn. There we go. Pull your waist yarn through like that and off the needle. I'll take my marker off now and put that away. And then I'm just going to take the two ends of my waist yarn and put a little slip knot in there that I can pull out later. Okay, and I'm going to tuck it inside my mitten for safekeeping. And then uh, we're going to get back to knitting the top of the mitten, the mitten hand. Now that the thumb stitches are off, I'm just going to fold that fabric like this. Okay, so the next instruction here is to cast on one stitch and then to continue knitting in the round. Um, at this point, because I'm just casting on one stitch, I find the easiest way to do that is just to do an e-loop cast on. So you take your thumb, uh, I'm right-handed, so I'm just going to take the thumb in my right hand, holding the yarn like this, I'm going to rotate my thumb over the yarn to create a loop, and then I'm going to slide that loop onto my needle like this. So uh, hold your yarn, rotate your thumb around, take the needle and go under the loop on your thumb, and place it on your needle and that is casting on one stitch. It's uh, simple and easy to do. Okay, one more time I'll just show you how that works. Hold your yarn uh, between your in your right hand, rotate your thumb over the yarn like this, take your needle and slide it under the yarn on your thumb, pull your thumb out and you've created a little slip knot. 
It's like a half hitch on your needle. And then grab an empty needle and continue knitting. So sometimes it this you know thumb gusset feels like it's in the way. So why don't you just ignore it for a second? Insert your needle into the next stitch, which is just on the other side of the thumb gusset. Come and grab your yarn from behind here, put it over the needle and knit it. Now give it a good tug just to tighten everything up behind there and carry on knitting. Okay, this will get easier the further up you get. And you have successfully removed the thumb for working on later. And you're going to continue to knit around. Uh, for the required number of inches measured from the end of the thumb gusset. So that means where the thumb, where, where you started here, that's where you're going to start to measure from. So I'm going to show you another little trick here for dealing with that. Okay, so I'm just completing the round here where we took the thumb stitches off and put them onto waste yarn. Okay, there's, there's the stitch that I cast on. Sometimes it can be super tight, sometimes it can be a little loose, so just do your best to knit it. And now what I'm going to do is take this locking stitch marker that I had down here when I started my thumb, and I'm going to move it up here, right under the stitches on the needle, right here, okay? And so that's going to mark my first needle for me, but it also it gives me a nice spot to measure from as I um, continue to work on the hand of the mitten. Okay, so keep knitting in the hand and we'll come back uh, to talk about the mitten top. One more thing can happen when you're knitting in the round on double pointed needles and that's that you can get um, some loose stitches in between the, the double pointed needles. Let me get to the end here and I'll show you what I mean. So sometimes in between right where these two needles are intersecting you can get a loose stitch in here and it looks like it might even look like you've dropped a stitch and there's like a um, uh, you can see the you can see the like the ladder rungs between the stitches in here. So um, what I do to avoid that is I knit the first stitch on any particular needle, and after it's on my right hand needle, I give it a good tug to tighten it up, and then I knit the second stitch, give it a tug, and the rest of the stitches are knit at my usual gauge. That works for me. Now it doesn't work for everybody. So here's another trick that you might find helpful, and that's to kind of move the join in your needles every now and then. So if I wanted to do that, what I would do is knit to the end of the needle. I'll put a stitch marker on to mark the beginning of the round, and I'll knit one more stitch from the next needle. So if I have to put my stitches back on the same needles, I know that this was the beginning of the round, because that point might move around on me a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll get to the end of this needle. Push my stitches up, knit one stitch from the next needle, and then transfer my needle over to my right hand, the empty needle over to my right hand, and continue knitting. So what am I doing here? I'm really just moving that weak spot around um, so that it doesn't line up one on top of the other and create a visible mark in my knitting. And I might, once I've made that adjustment, I might knit a couple rounds just like that and then continue to uh, move that spot again. So if I, you know, I can do a couple rounds like this and then when I'm ready I'm just going to carry on with moving it one stitch over. So there's my beginning of the round marker, 
There's another stitch. I knit one off here and so on. And then later on when we get to the mitten topper, I'll have to put the stitches back in the order that they were supposed to be in. So this is just a little trick for moving around that weak spot. If you're working on double pointed needles and tightening the first stitch doesn't work for you. All right, keep going. Okay, so I am I am at my three inches, maybe just slightly shy of my three inches. So I'm going to uh, make one more, I'm going to do one more round. And I'm going to, um, on this round, reset my stitches so that they, um, so that they're working out for the setup round uh, that's going to come next with the decreases for the top of the mitten. So as I'm knitting, knitting around here, uh, on the pattern, there are instructions for how to set up your mittens in terms of the number of stitches that you want to have on each of the needles. And for me, that's going to start with having 17 stitches at, on, the, on the first needle. So I'm going to take off my marker here and pick up an extra needle. And I'm just going to count off 17 stitches or whatever the first number is for your uh, for your pattern for the decreases. The 17 happens to be half the number of stitches in my mitten. So this is a pretty usual kind of setup where you would have half the stitches on one needle and a quarter of the stitches on each of your other two needles. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. That leaves me with 17 stitches in total for the rest of my mitten. So I'm going to put 8 stitches on one needle and 9 stitches on the other. So that's eight, and then the remaining stitches on my third needle. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay, so I um, have then I have my stitches kind of backwards here. So that's no problem. I'm going to transfer one stitch from needle number two back to needle number one so that I have the right number of stitches on my first needle. 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. And then I'm going to split up the other two stitches over two needles. So needle number two, two, four, six, eight. Needle number three, two, four, six, eight, nine. So the important part to remember about this is when you go to start your mitten top, you would like to have half of your stitches on one needle and half of your stitches split up over the other two needles. And that way, when you start to do your decreases for the top of the mitten, your decreases will be centered along the edge of your mitten. So we're going to do some decreases now. We'll do a decrease on the first side. Uh, we've got your stitches split into two halves. Again, one half on one needle, um, the other half split over two more needles and you're going to begin to do decreases along the first half of your stitches here and here and then when you turn your work you'll do another set of decreases here and here. So in the pattern uh, you can follow the instructions they're the same for all sizes it says knit one SSK so I'm going to knit one and do an SSK. An SSK is a decrease that works like this. You're going to slip 
the next two stitches from the left needle to the right needle as if to knit. Then you insert the tip of your left needle into the front of those two slip stitches and knit them together through the back loop or knit them together on the right hand needle. Then you're going to knit to three stitches before the marker, but in this case that's just the end of the needle. So three stitches here, three stitches before the end of the needle here. Okay, three stitches, and now I'm going to knit two together and then knit one. And we're going to repeat that. So you turn your work. And I'm going to begin by knitting one and then a slip slip knit decrease again. So again, that's slip one, two stitches as if to knit. Insert the tip of your left hand needle into the front of both of those two slip stitches and then knit them together with the right needle. Knit until you have three stitches left on the back side of your mitten. And then when you have three stitches left, knit two together, knit one. We're going to work this round, this decrease round, uh, the total number of times that it says in your pattern. So for me that's five times. And then we're going to thread the yarn through the remaining stitches. So let's keep working around doing these decreases and then we'll work the last part at the end of the decrease rounds. Alright, so here I am. I am down to the number of stitches required in the pattern. I've just finished my last double pointed needle. And so now the last part of the mitten top is just to cut your yarn. I like to leave myself a, a fairly good length of tail. And then uh, you're going to thread a wool needle. And we're going to uh, pass the remaining stitches onto the end of the wool needle. So I just go around like this. Here's, here's where my yarn is coming out of the needle. So that's the last stitch that I did. And I'm just going to, uh, as if I were, almost as if I was going to knit again, I'm going to the next stitch in my sequence. And I'm just going to transfer the stitches over to my wool needle. Like this. Pass the yarn through turn and continue working around like that, just passing the stitches onto the wool needle. When you're done, you can just draw them tightly to close up the top of your mitten. Isn't that nice and neat and slick? <laughs> and then what I like to do to secure everything is go um, pass my wool needle through these stitches again. So I'm just finding where the last one came through and I'm just going to slide my needle through them one more time like this. And that if you if you end up having any kind of if if there if your gauge is loose, uh, you might have a little bit of space still under there. So um, in addition to keeping those stitches nice and secure by passing them through a second time, you also might fill in any space that's remaining. Then you just take your wool needle. Slide it through the top of your stitches. Pull it through like that. And then later on we're going to turn that mitten inside out and weave in the end. So I'm just going to pull that into the inside for now. There we go. Okay, so it's just popped through the middle there. Turn your mitten back around and let's finish off the thumb.
Okay, for the thumb, um, the instructions say to place the held stitches back on larger needles. So let's do that. Um, now I can take out this little locking stitch marker because I don't need that anymore. I'm just going to undo the little tie on my waist yarn. And I'm going to pick up a needle. So um, uh, what I like to do is kind of think about um, how many stitches I've got and knowing that I'm going to put them onto three needles. So in my case, um, just give your stitches a count here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and I'm going to pick up one in here. So I've got about 13 stitches, so I'm going to put approximately four stitches on each needle. So I am, here are my first four stitches, and I'm just going to slide them onto my wool needle. Um, sometimes these stitches have a tendency to want to kind of recede down in there, so if you need to, you can pull on your waist yarn and give that stitch a little bit of a tug just, just to pull it up again. But essentially you're just going to stick your wool needle into the stitch along with your waist yarn. And then I like to get that waist yarn out of the way. Okay, I'm going to pick up another four stitches. Just using my waist yarn to help me kind of see where those are. Okay, pull your waist yarn out. Here are my last, I've got five stitches here. And I take my waist yarn out. So there, my stitches are now back on my needle. And I've got um, three needles in play here. And I'm going to knit with the fourth one. Now here's where I deviate slightly from the pattern. Um, in the pattern instructions it says to knit across these stitches and then pick up a stitch from the body of the mittens. And I like to pick up a stitch and knit. Um, <clears throat> So that's just an individual preference, and you can do it in either way that you like. Doesn't it? Doesn't um, don't think it changes the integrity of your mitten at all to do it first or second. Um, so um, picking up stitches is exactly the same in both cases. You have a stitch down here that you cast on in order to behind the mitten, and you carried on along here. So you've got a cast on stitch down here and that's kind of where we intend to pick up a stitch. Um, now another sort of deviation I have is that this uh, back space here I feel is wider than one stitch wide so I will often pick up one more stitch than what the pattern calls for so in this case two stitches. Um, and when I pick up stitches I like to pick them up um, in a way that makes them neat and tidy. So. What I'm looking at here are the little V's that create a knit stitch. Now, um, I, I don't want to get overly complicated, but basically what, whatever direction you're looking at, uh, look for a little V in your uh, knitted fabric. And you can stick your needle right in the center of that V. And notice that when I do that, I've got a couple of bars here underneath my needle. That, that's good. That provides um, that provides a little extra strength on that stitch that we're picking up. So I'm going to find my little V here, stick my needle through it, and then I take my yarn and I wrap the yarn around the needle like I'm going to knit that stitch. You see that? So essentially here I've just taken a loop and I've wrapped it around the needle, but in, in what I'm Technically what I'm doing is actually knitting this stitch. So I'll take my yarn and just pretend that this, uh, where you're picking up here, that's your other needle. And you just wrap your yarn around and pull that wrap up through that stitch that's there. Okay, I'm going to do another one here. 
uh, just to close the hole a little bit. So I find the next V that's in my in my knitted work, stick my needle right into the center of that V, and don't use the tail. Use the yarn attached to the ball. Knit that stitch. So wrap the yarn around it and pull it up to the top. That's that's the trickiest part. And then I'm going to knit around. When I come back to here, because I'm not supposed to have two stitches picked up there, just one, I will knit those first two stitches together. So I'm just going to knit around here. There's my super long tail. I'll tuck it in there later. Okay, so here's here's the tail where I picked up these first two stitches and I was only supposed to pick up one. So on this round I'm going to knit those two picked up stitches together. Nope. There we go. And then continue knitting in the round. The pattern does also say you could put a beginning of the round marker in. And so that beginning of the round marker should go right here. And because I was busy doing my decreases, I'm just going to wait until I get around to it again. So there's my picked up stitch, beginning of the round marker, and carry on. And you can see that that tail is getting in my way. So I'm going to tuck it inside the mitten, out of sight. And we'll come back to it later because that tail is an important part of fixing any holes behind the thumb later on. Right, so you're going to knit the thumb of your mitten in the round until you have the number of inches called for in your pattern. It's about just slightly under half the distance of the hand of your mitten. I'll show you what that means next. All right, keep working on your thumb and uh, we'll come back to the thumb top next. I've been working on my thumb here for a little bit and I think I might be at the right point now. Uh, my pattern says to go for the thumb for one and a quarter inches. So I'm just going to use my needle here. Here's one and a quarter inches on my sock ruler. So I'm going to just put my thumb there and then just measure it like that. Yep, like maybe I could go one more row, but I think I'm probably right. Uh, right on there. But another thing that you can do if you don't have a measuring device handy is use the mitten hand. So in my particular pattern from the thumb to the top of the mitten where I started my decreases was three inches. So this will be about uh, just under halfway between there. So if I fold my mitten top over so that the decreases are right at the base of the thumb then I can see that you know I'm I think I'm pretty much I'm I'm pretty much right there. It's it looks like it's the right place to be for an inch and a quarter, which is what mine is. Of course, if you're in doubt, I mean add one more row on, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, but if you feel like you are at the right place, or if you have someone who can try it on, even better. Um, we're now going to decrease for the top of the thumb and it's the same instructions no matter what size you're doing. So um, it's knit two together. So I'm just going to knit this last stitch of my round. There's my marker for the beginning of the round. I'll take that off. And now it is knit two together all the way around. Just knit two together, 
knit two together and knit two together as you work your way around the thumb. So let's just get that done here. And that last stitch, I'll just show you what to do with it. Because I've got an odd number of stitches here, so I'm going to knit two together, knit two together. There we go. I'm going to slip this stitch back onto the first needle and knit those last two together. And then the top of the thumb is pretty much the same as the top of the mitten. You're going to cut your yarn, thread it onto a wool needle. There we go. And then pass the stitches of the thumb onto your wool needle. One, two here. There's a few there. Okay, pull tight. And then remember what we did at the top of the mitten as well. You can put your needle under those loops one more time and fill in any space that's in there. Pull it tight and stick the wool needle down through the center of your thumb. And we're almost finished. Weaving in ends is next. All right, we're almost finished this mitten tutorial. Uh, the very last step is weaving in the ends. So you can turn your mitten inside out and you've got a few tails to weave in. So let's start with, let's start with that. So I'm going to go up to the top of the mitten here. This was the yarn that we drew through the very top of the mitten and weaving it in is um, probably the easiest part. So let's start with that. Um, here we just want to give it a little tug again just to make sure that everything is in there secured tight. And then I'm going to go, um, I'm just going to go around in a circular motion if I can. Here we go. Okay, and then my, um, that's just to secure it, and then my, uh, my next technique is just to weave the yarn uh, up and down through the backs of the purl bumps uh, on the inside of the mitten. Okay, and I might just, just to make sure it's like really secure, go down a row and just weave it back again, just under the purl bumps of the inside of the mitten. Okay, and then I will trim that end. And again, I usually leave about a quarter of an inch of yarn sticking up here, because when you go and pull on that um, fabric, when you put your hand inside, that uh, where you wove it in is gonna recede a little bit. So I like to leave a little bit there, because otherwise it sometimes ends up poking out through the other side. Okay, now um, let's talk about the, uh, so the top of the thumb, exactly the same thing. You're just going to uh, weave it in, pull it tight, weave it in around here. So let's uh, let's talk about the uh, place where you joined your thumb in. And there's, there's often a hole back here because we've picked up stitches and if you picked up one stitch, um, you may find that you have a slightly bigger hole. If you picked up two stitches, it might be smaller. But uh, there is always a hole back here, and it's generally speaking a weak spot uh, because of those picked up stitches and because of the opposition of your thumb on your hand. You put a lot of you put a lot of pressure on that spot. So this is an opportunity to close the hole and to kind of reinforce it against future wear as well. So you can see here that I, I can see a little hole right here. And so to close that hole, it's very easy. You just need to, on the inside of the mitten, pick up some stitches around the hole. So here to the, to the right of the hole, 
here to the left, and one stitch maybe towards the top of the hole, and then you just draw it closed. Look at that, hole fixed. So I'm going to secure that by uh, pulling my needle through the purl bump of any stitch. I'm going to check the other side for holes. This side looks okay, so I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And then I'm going to secure my tail just by weaving it up and down through the purl bumps of the yarn in the hand next to it. Don't go too far here. I'm going to go down a row here and then back. I like to turn, a, I call it a U-turn in my work. And that just makes sure that the yarn is held securely in place like that. And then again, trim that end, leaving about a quarter of an inch of the tail sticking up because as you can see with movement, that tail is going to disappear. Now here's another spot in my mitten. This is where I cut my yarn. Remember I had a little knot in my yarn and so I cut it and so that is going to leave a hole as well. So I'm just going to give these stitches a little bit of a tug just to tighten them up and then I'm going to weave them in. This one's going to go in this direction and this one's going to go in this direction. Kind of like crossing your arms for a hug and that will make sure that no hole um, ends up in my mitten. So you can see if I were to wind or uh, weave them in in these directions they'll leave a hole. So I'm going to cross them over the hole to make sure that that hole is closed and secure. Uh, my, my weaving in of ends uh, here is exactly the same as in any other place. I'm just going back and forth through the pearl bumps. Nothing, um, nothing too fancy. This is the inside of the mitten and chances are very good no one's ever going to turn them inside out and examine how I wove in my ends. So there's one. And this one's a little trickier because it's shorter, so I'm going to put my needle in first. So always a wise idea to leave a nice long tail because these short tails are a pain. All right, and let's talk about this uh, tail. This is the uh, tail of yarn that was left from casting on. And because we're working in a spiral, you're always going to find that there's a little bit of a divot here where you started and worked around and your next row came and it, it's joined into the uh, second row up. So when you're knitting in the round, you're always knitting in a spiral. And so your uh, cast on edge will never completely match up. So I'm just going to even it out here. There's my, I call it like a little divot there. There's my first stitch, obviously, because it's got the yarn attached to it. And this uh, stitch here looks like the last stitch of that row. So I'm just going to tilt it up like this and take a look at the top here. I'm, I'm looking at where my yarn is coming out and I'm looking for a couple of uh, edges along this sort of twisted chain stitch along the edge here. I'm putting my needle under what looks to me like a little V along the edge of my mitten and I'm pulling the yarn through that V and then I'm going right back into um, the same spot that that yarn is coming out of. So just like this. So what I'm doing here is I'm working another kind of V shape in along the chain of my mitten top and I'm just pulling it to about the same thickness as the rest of it. And that just kind of builds up the edge of the mitten, uh, closes that divot and makes everything look nice and neat. And then I'm going to weave in this end along the inside of the cuff going um, 
up and down or left and right through the knit stitches along the edge of one of these rib rows. And I will go as far as I can here and then I might go all the way through and then back up. Remember that little um, U-turn that I talked about before? I'm going to do that here as well. And now I'm going to just take this back down again a little bit because I don't want that tail to be close to the edge of the mitten. And with this one, I always like to end with it kind of with a tail in the little valley there between two knit rows. So I'm going to end with it coming out this way. And again, trim it with about a quarter of an inch. Give it a good tug. And after I've tugged it, if I want to just trim that off just a little bit more. Oops, caught my mitten there. There can't even see it. All right, I'm going to finish uh, I'm going to finish weaving in the end on my thumb and then this mitten is done and it'll be time to make mitten number two. Uh, lastly, uh, here's another pair of mittens that I made earlier and I attached a little bit of I cord to these mittens. So I'll show you how to make I-cord. Um, I just uh, made the I-cord and then I sewed it in along the inside of the mitten uh, so that it's nice and secure along the cuff of the mitten. And so if you would like to do I-cord um, and if you have some leftover yarn that you'd like to use up, I-cord is quite easy. Uh, you need two double pointed needles to make I-cord and you can make a three or four stitch I-cord. I didn't have very much yarn left over from my last project so I made a three stitch I-cord which is quite economical for yarn so if you would like to do a uh, three stitch or four stitch I-cord you can as well. Um, I'm going to give myself a little more. Give yourself a nice tail because you're going to have to sew it into your mitten anyway. So I'm casting on three stitches. I'm doing a long tail cast on here but you can do any type of cast on you like. And what you're going to do is once you cast on your stitches just slide them down to the opposite end of the needle. Don't turn your work. Insert your other wool needle and knit those three or four stitches whatever you decide to do, whatever thickness you like. And don't turn your work. Slide your stitches down to the other end of your double pointed needle. Take the yarn across the back and knit those stitches again. One, two, three. Don't turn your work. Slide your stitches to this end. Take the yarn across the back and knit them again. You're just going to repeat this process over and over again and that creates I cord. Um, occasionally you may find that you slide the stitches right off your needle. There we go. So, oh, oh dear, no worries. You just take your needle, pop them back on, Slide them over to the opposite end so that your yarn is coming across. And continue to knit your eye cord. Make it as long as you want. Isn't that cute? Um, so you make, make your eye cord as long as you want to uh, bind it off. You're just going to knit three together. Um, if you have a hard time with that, you can slip one stitch, knit two together, and then pass that slip stitch over and that works quite well to bind off your eye cord also. Alright, have a great time making mittens everybody.